Hey there, welcome to Cameron's Weekly. Sometimes it can be difficult to know what sort of questions to expect in a university admissions interview, especially for chemical engineering. So in this video, we'll be covering the technical questions, the four styles of them that is, that you can expect in a standard chemical engineering interview. I've also attached some other examples within these four categories in the description below, so let's get into it. Question 1. Sketch the graph of LNX over X. As part of the more wider discipline of graph sketching that you can expect at chemical engineering interviews, this question is a very common question type that you'd see when you go to interview for university admissions. As with common graph sketching questions, there's a number of rules you should follow to be able to get the question done properly. And it obviously starts with drawing an axis first. You should first consider what happens at x equals zero. And at x equals zero, ln x over x gives us an undefined region. So this means we know that x equals zero is an asymptote. Moving on from this, we should then consider what happens to the graph when you take an infinitely big number and an infinitely negatively large number as well. So we should see how the graph behaves as x tends towards infinity and towards negative infinity. If we start with negative infinity, ln x over x, with the x equals around a very large negative number, it won't give you any solution because ln x only takes positive values of x. So we know that there's no graph on the negative x-axis. And if we look at how the graph behaves as x tends towards positive infinity, ln x of a very large number over a very large number is a very small number. So we know that the graph will tend towards zero as x gets infinitesimally larger. Next, normally we would determine the asymptotes by plugging in the values of x and trying to see where the asymptotes would lie, such as x equals zero, y equals zero, and so forth. But because we already have the asymptote here, we wouldn't need to in this example. Having been done with the asymptotes, we can now focus on the turning point. And using the quotient rule on ln x over x to differentiate, we get one minus ln x over x squared. And when we equate this to zero, we get a turning point at x equals e, meaning we know that the only turning point of this graph is at x equals e. From here, we should determine whether this turning point is a maximum or minimum. And to save time, I'll explain that after you double differentiate and plug in x equals e, you get that the graph is actually a maximum point at x equals e. Having now determined the nature of the graph, you now have all the information you need to draw the sketch. So you have an asymptote at x equals zero, and the graph tends towards zero on the x-axis as you get infinitesimally larger. So the graph will come up here, as you can see, and that's what you should expect. You can also use Desmos as a tool to help you see if you've got the graph incorrect. Question number two, explain the structure and bonding of benzene. Now this falls into a class of questions where you'll basically be tested on your ability to explain class topics that you might have learnt earlier or at the time of your interview. And it's basically a building point from which the interviewer will ask you more questions about why certain things are the way they are, how you expect them to behave under certain situations, and other general understanding points as well. Now going about on how to answer this question, you'd answer it exactly the same as if you'd answer an exam style question. So you need to focus on six key points. You'd start by explaining that it's a planar molecule in a cyclical orientation whereby the molecular formula is C6H6 and each carbon is bonded covalently in strong bonds to two other carbons and an hydrogen. You would also explain how the p orbitals overlap with each carbon delocalizing one of its electrons to form p orbital rings above and below the planar structure, giving benzene its unique delocalized electron ring properties. Each bond is the same length and it has a degree angle of 120 degrees. Now that you've answered this question, the interviewer could then use us as a springboard to ask you why it doesn't undergo addition reactions, to which you could explain that the delocalized electron ring means that it's un energetically more stable than you'd expect it to be, and therefore isn't very willing to disrupt this ring by taking on um, any nuclear files. Question number three. What percentage of Earth's water is stored inside cows? Now this may seem like a silly question and could be laughable to you, but it's actually a very testing question because it tests the candidate's ability to make assumptions and derive mathematical calculations from it. So although it may seem quite basic and straightforward and laughable as I said earlier, there's a number of assumptions you need to make. This tests critical lateral thinking and sensibility of assumptions you make during your calculations, mostly testing the ability for you to think in a certain way. 
You would start off by calculating the surface area of the Earth using a reasonable approximation and then calculating the depth at which you think water would be. And from there you'd have to assume a certain percentage, say 90%, of the Earth's crust is covered in water, the other 10% being landmass. So from here you'd have to work out the total volume of water on Earth. Moving on from this, you'd have to make assumptions about the properties of a cow, such as the dimensions of a cow, how much water it would have, say for example 70%, how many cows there are on Earth, and there consequently, what volume of Earth's water are in cows, and then you have to express it as a percentage. So this shows that there's actually a multi-step process involved in calculating the answer for this question, and therefore it's quite good at analysing critical thinking skills as I said before, as well as testing the assumptions you would make. Question 4. Draw this suspended ruler as a free body diagram and explain the forces. Now this falls into the final class of question that I would say are the more practical side of questions. So regardless of whether your interview is virtual or in person, they may get you to interact with something you have seen or they have given to you. So you need to make reasonable commentary on the academic side for what you have seen and how you expect something to behave. In this example, you may be asked to have a ruler suspended by a piece of string from the ceiling and they may ask you to explain what forces you'd see acting on it and may get you to interact with it such as spin it around, loosen the string, tighten the string or other things as well as maybe take a ball and stick module of an atom and explain what's wrong with it. They could then ask you follow-up questions like what would happen to the forces in the free body diagram if you shortened the string and replaced it with a rubber band or if you replaced it with a non-squishable piece of metal? How do you expect the ruler to behave and what sort of forces would be acting on it if you held it from one side of the room and let it go? These are all really to test your practical application of what you've learnt in the classroom to real life scenarios and will most likely test mechanics. So those were the four types of questions you could expect in a technical university interview for chemical engineering and I've included more examples for each section down below in the description so do check them out. If there's anything you feel I have missed or I could have included more about feel free to comment down in the comment section below. Thank you for watching the video. Be sure to like it if you enjoyed it and leave your comments and suggestions down in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels and if you click here or here you can watch another one of our videos. Click up here to subscribe and thank you very much.